is now my pleasure to introduce William and Mary's provost, Peggy Agoris, to bring this historic summit to a close. Thanks so much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it has been a great honor and pleasure and privilege to um, um, partner with NATO for all of us at William and Mary to organize today's Youth Summit. Over the last several weeks, um, as the event drew near, our two teams became one, a massive accomplishment on its own. I want to echo Colleen's and President Rowe's uh, comments and thank sincerely everyone who dedicated their time to gather a truly incredible lineup of panelists who generously, generously shared their expertise and community with us today. I'd also like to thank the titular youth in the room and online for sharing your interests, passions, and energy, and for the work that lies ahead. There was a question earlier this morning addressed to the Secretary General about the significance of youth for NATO. And um, I really want to reinforce um, the Secretary's answer and say, it is the youth's dynamism and enthusiasm that plays the most critical role in actually re-energizing, mobilizing, and ultimately leading NATO into the future. So um, as General Lavigne said previously, I too feel young. Um, and even though, strictly speaking, I do not qualify as youth anymore, barely. Um, I want to really say how much I feel uh, the youthful energy and excitement that is in this room and think of the future and about the tremendous potential that is around the room today, your potential, to make the future something wonderful. Personally, and uh, even though I spent most of my adult life in the United States, I was born and uh, spent my formative years in Greece. Um, NATO has always been a presence in our lives in Greece. One of the older members of NATO. Um, Greece, as you know, uh, and as um, the president of Microsoft mentioned, is a small country, but of historical importance but also geopolitically important, with all the good and bad that comes with it. As such, we had um, our fair share of conflict. So growing up, I felt the presence of threat to my family, my friends, and my nation, particularly before uh, all the years um, after the war, the Second World War, and before the collapse of the Warsaw Pact. Greece was the last European frontier, not only geographically because of its location, but also figuratively as the only democratic nation um, in, in the Balkans in an era of the Eastern Bloc. And so um, it was really you know, because of NATO that we felt comfort to know that Greece was not alone against the rest of the world. And you can understand the powerfulness of this feeling. We were a country within an organization that supported its members, and we knew that. I grew up humbled by NATO as an idea, but also by the visibility of NATO as an organization. There is great and important and personal power in the idea of NATO, creating a sense of safety and security that is necessary in many areas of the world projecting stability through cooperation, and intrinsically promoting something which is both simple and profound, survival. Survival of the individual, survival of the nation, state, survival of democracy, liberty, and the rule of law, both within and outside NATO borders. NATO and other organizations like universities, like us, to the European Union, all the way to the European Union, also generate a feeling of belonging to something bigger than one's own national borders. And belonging is one of the seven 
explicitly mentioned, published, and practiced values at William & Mary. A belonging that encourages us to think bigger about shared challenges that affect us today and will define our world for generations to come. An example of thinking bigger is the challenge to protect our environment and combat climate change and the complex issues of poverty, migration, disinformation, as we just saw, and artificial intelligence. In other words, the challenges you have considered today in this room and will consider in your work, your scholarship, and your daily lives. This feeling of belonging to something bigger stimulates us as compassionate partners within a group of diverse needs, resources, and peoples, thinking not only of our own interests, but considering the very personal interests of our broader global community. As I felt in Greece as a younger person, and as I feel now standing here at an event full of intelligent, passionate people, we are not alone. In reflecting on all of your experiences and what you have experienced today, I encourage you to ask yourselves, how do we really take this message and make it a part of our daily lives? How can this message comfort and at the same time drive us? How can this perspective that we are not alone influence decisions we make as we vote, as we educate ourselves, as we help one another? Because even as we consider the more narrowly defined interests of our own countries, there are consequences in our actions that affect others. And ultimately, these consequences will return to us. William and Mary takes very seriously our role in teaching and preservation of democratic values and international cooperation. It is the responsibility of higher education to provide spaces of belonging, of community and connection among students, faculty, global experts, local environments, and our communities in general, to gather strength and resources and to guide the potential of youth to extraordinary achievement. As the Provost of William and Mary, I have the tremendous privilege of being the Chief Academic Officer of our university. As such, my office connects with every corner of academic inquiry at William and Mary. From the GeoLab, a student-driven lab that works to create and promote vibrant global societies of data-driven policymakers, to the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, where critical expertise on coastal resilience and climate change predicts and plans for the future. The William and Mary community of undergraduates, graduate students, faculty, and off-campus partners are constantly pushing the boundaries of discovery, scholarship, and teaching, uncovering new possibilities, and even transforming fields of scholarship with a mindset of curiosity, agility, and innovation. Like the William and Mary students and alumni that have participated today, and there have been many, I'm sure that all of you have passions and cross disciplines, and that encourages and excites all of us at William and Mary. Because the university is a space of exploration, trying new things, creating new things, where you discover yourselves as young professionals, expand the boundaries of your potential, and transform that potential into purpose. Today, my faith in, your, in our shared mission of peace, cooperation, and ideation grew in bounds and leaps. Because I see in you all, students, graduates, and young professionals, those of you who have been present in Brussels, very late by now, and here in DC, and many, many more who have joined us virtually. I see in you a remarkable community with transformative plans yet to be made. And since this has been a wonderful but long day, I will leave you with this. Ask impossible questions. Stretch beyond what you believe you are capable. And remember, we're not alone. Thank you. And on this note, our event concludes, and I'd like to invite you all to our reception. <laughs>